Well, hi, everybody, and a very good afternoon. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to join us today. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and TravelProfessionalNews.com, I want to welcome all of you to today's webinar. We have a really exciting and helpful presentation for you today, hosted by Passport Online. Passport Online is the industry leader in delivering comprehensive digital marketing solutions to travel agents. This includes websites, email marketing tools, and social media programs, all geared to work for and with the travel agent community. Our speaker today is Amanda Cabaceres, Social Media, Business Development, and Marketing Coordinator for Passport Online. Amanda's topic today is social media and your travel agency, and I know we're all so anxious to hear Amanda speak about this really timely topic. Before we get started, a reminder that we welcome your questions. You can type in your questions at any time in the question area you see on the right-hand panel of your screen. When Amanda is finished with her presentation, we'll get to as many questions as we can. You also want to notice that down in the chat box, we have a link for folks to uh, click on to sign up for ESP. You'll hear more about that later, but keep that link in mind. So now I'm going to turn the microphone over to Amanda so she can get started. Welcome, Amanda. Thank you so much for having us. We're really excited to be here today. As always, it's been a little while since we've talked about social media, so we thought it was a really good time to kind of check in and have another social media conversation. Um, so we've had several webinars in the past discussing social media. So if you joined us before, you might be familiar with some of our, um, you know, kind of instructions and ideas and tips. But today we're going to take a bit of a different approach, and we're going to discuss some um, different social media related topics that we really haven't discussed yet. So if you joined us before, this is going to be totally fresh content, and I'm pretty excited to share it with you all. So I'm going to go over the agenda really quickly. Today we're going to start by discussing the basics, so just why social media is so important for your business. Then we're going to talk a bit about how you can use social media as a travel agent and really what you should be using it for, just some different ideas there and what it can do. Um, then we're going to share a couple different ways that you can use social media to market travel. And then finally, we're going to discuss the top five most popular social media platforms. We're going to share a little bit how you know to help you decide which platform might be the best for you, and then we're going to answer the question of what type of content should you post where. Um, I did want to mention that we will be talking about ESP, which is Passport Online Social Media Products, throughout this webinar. I'm going to give you a little bit of information about it really quickly, just in case you're curious about that link. So ESP is a social media posting service that will post to your business Facebook page up to three times per day. Um, that's seven days a week. Like I said, we're going to get into all the details of that later. All of the Facebook examples that I will be showing you today will actually be ESP posts. So if you're listening to this webinar and you're thinking you wanted to sign up, you can click that link in the chat box and you can sign up right away. And then as soon as we get that in, we'll get you all set up. And it's even still early enough today that you could be receiving your first post as soon as this evening. So just wanted to have that available to you and let it, you know that it's right there for you just in case you wanted it. But with that, I'm just going to jump in. So we're going to start, like I said, with why is social media so important? Um, social media is important, and you've probably heard this before, but it's really important in the travel space. So social media has transformed the way travel agencies look at marketing and branding. As a result, the number of benefits that, has, that it has to offer travel agents um, have actually been, excuse me, as a result, the number of benefits that it has to offer travel agents have actually really been seen by travel agents who have started investing time in social media. And those who do invest the time in social media have been reaping enormous rewards as well. The travel industry depends a lot on word of mouth, and social media simply gives people the platform to voice their opinions and listen to others just like them from all over the world. When a traveler voices his or her opinion with regards to travel to a travel agent on a po popular platform, um, they manage to get hundreds of other people acquainted with the travel agent as well. This can be through sharing posts, this can be through leaving reviews, comments, asking questions, just with the nature of social media and how you'll begin to see posts that are showing up on other people's pages or your friends are interacting with. This is just such a quick way to spread um, word of mouth content. And then, very important, social media also helps with your marketing budget. 
So this is a very cost-effective way to organically reach a very large audience. Um, you know, with social media, you're not wasting paper materials. You're not having to spend money on reprinting materials. And you can share updates uh, immediately. So you don't have to go through the process of, you know, submitting it, having a team do it, any of that. You can just have an idea and put it on your social media platforms and then immediately get it spread. So how you can effectively use social media as a travel agent. When used properly, social media can help travel agents become more visible and also increase their clientele. Here's just a few kind of simple tips to help you get started as a travel agent. Become a brand that people connect with. Social media gives you the opportunity to brand your agency as a trustworthy company. You can easily create a proper online reputation by getting your existing customers to share their experience on your social media channels, posting reviews um, your customers have shared with you, you can repost those on your social media, and don't forget to share your ideas, offer helpful travel tips, and offer your customers with unique articles on different takes and, you know, kind of some tips and tricks and things like that. Having the right content is likely to attract more customers and it'll help you um, become their trusted source of information. Another really important thing to do is offer the right deals. You know, one of the main charms of online, the online travel portal is the ability to offer customers with exciting deals, uh, at, like I said, in, in just a second. You can show the world that you are up to date and you have, you know, insight and able to offer specials and things like that. Um, you can offer your customers last minute deals on car rentals, special room rates, seat sales. And this has a major impact on brand awareness for your travel agency as well. And then finally, and maybe most importantly, show your expertise as a travel agent. Um, create ideas for bucket lists, use images to convey powerful thoughts, and use your expertise as a travel agent to offer your readers with more information about new destinations that they can visit during their next vacation. Um, you know, one of the most important roles as a travel agent is to create the need to travel, and social media really helps you do this seamlessly. So, the best way to start thinking about how to use social media as a travel agent, you know, people always talk and they always ask questions like, well, is it generating leads? What's it doing? And, you know, you should use social media to try to generate leads, but I think that you should really be looking at your your social media as a whole and kind of identifying what your goals are. And one goal I think, and that is commonly coming up in research I've done, is that um, the best way to start thinking about how to use social media as a travel agent is to start with the goal of like reinforcing the dream state or creating a daydream. Um, you know, and what I mean by that is you may not be showing locations that your customer is interested in that day, but you may just cause them to start, you know, daydream and doing a little bit of exploring. And you might inspire them to kind of go and learn a little bit more or book that next vacation, whatever it might be. Um, but it's just to inspire that daydream. So you can do this by using photos that are visually stunning and attractive and just kind of pulling people in that way. You can also um, do simple things like, like increase traffic to your social media accounts. Make sure your profile is comprehensive, um, add share buttons to your web page, use hashtags when applicable, create original and meaningful content, and uh, most importantly, like you've heard us say many times before, don't forget that all roads lead back to your website. Make sure that wherever they are, they can find your website or they can find your social media channels and they can learn more about you and find the information that they're looking for. Also, I really believe that it's important to have a blend of business and personal on your page. Um, after all, you are a real life human and people like doing business with people more than they like doing business with brands. Um, you can do this by sharing updates about your team, celebrations, and any kind of exciting news you might have. You know, on our, our Passport Online business page, um, the posts that do the best are any that are sharing some information about our team, cool trips our team has taken, um, different exciting news, whatever that might be. Those just get so much more interaction. And I think it's because people do like to interact with a person. Um, and then, you know, you don't need to participate in every social media platform, but it's a good idea to stay active on at least one or two. Um, social media is time consuming. 
but you can pick a couple social media platforms and do them really well and you'll reap the benefits almost immediately. So with that said, which platform is best for your agency and what type of content should you post there? You know, unfortunately, every agency, every business, every person is a little bit different. So I can't tell you exactly which platform is right for you. But what I will do in the next few slides is lay out the benefits of each platform and then share of what's considered great content that platform. So looking at it and trying to decide which um, take this content. What content that I'm sharing is interesting to you? What of the examples seems like it would be to your customer base? Um, and you might be surprised by that. Let's move on. Okay, so before you get started, before you get too far into it, um, it's always a really good idea to do some reflection on your current social media strategies and ask yourself a few questions. Just, I know social media can be overwhelming, especially as you're just getting started. So here's kind of just a, a easy place to start. Um, we at Passport Online um, are pretty familiar with social media and we're always kind of willing to have these conversations with you. So as I'm going through these questions that you're answering, I don't know. Um, let, let us know, reach out, but let us know if you'd like to chat with us maybe one-on-one -on -one and we can help you identify some of your social media goals. Um, so ask yourself, how many social medias do you have time and money to run? Some are, some are free, some benefit by putting a little bit of money behind them, but how much time do you realistically have? Where is your audience and which social media networks do they um, exist in currently? Um, how often can you schedule a post and do you need tools to help you? Is pre-scheduling posts going to be something that's beneficial to you? How will you integrate all of your social media channels and your website? And then also try to figure out how you want to tackle a social media marketing advertising strategy. You know, managing a personal a Facebook page is a very easy to do kind of things come to you and you post it as it comes along. Managing a business social media account takes a little bit more work and planning, just the same as you do any of your marketing efforts. So if you start to kind of think of it that way, it's just another marketing tool and something that you should come up with a plan. Um, those plans should support different um, strategies and initiatives you have going on within your business already. Um, so just take some time and kind of ask yourself these questions and this should help you. Even if you don't know the answer to any of these right away, that's okay. This is at least you know, something that can kind of help you begin to identify your goals. So uh, these are the top five social media platforms for travel agencies in this order. So Facebook, probably no surprise, Facebook is number one, Twitter is number two, Instagram, followed by Pinterest and LinkedIn. And Pinterest and LinkedIn are kind of tied. We'll talk about those with a little bit of a different conversation. Um, so we're gonna get into these different, five different platforms and talk about different content you can share there. First step is Facebook. Uh, if you only have the time and resources to be active on one social media platform, Facebook is the one to choose. Most of your clients as potential clients are already here, and this makes it perfect for developing an active Facebook community around your travel brand. Um, people often look to Facebook first, um, and like I said, it's the platform that has the most users and most people are already there. So if you only have time for one, this would be the one I would recommend. Um, again, like I said, most of your clients and potential clients are already there. Facebook is one of the best places to start off as a travel agent new to social media. It has the maximum number of users and is commonly used by people all around the world on a daily basis. Facebook offers your agency with ease of access, up-to-date information, and it has an excellent lead generating platform. Um, and the platform also makes it really easy, like I said, for you to generate new fans is you can use the tools that they have available to um, target existing clients and things like that through the um, Facebook like ads or their page promotions, different things like that. Those are um, that last question where you, you do adding things, promotion, those do come with a cost. Um, and that is something that you would have to kind of weigh out the value of that. And that's definitely something that my recommendation would be if you wanted to boost a post or do an ad, start small and then work your way up. 
So what do you post on Facebook? Um, on Facebook, you should post beautiful images of wonderful destinations. Again, this goes into the idea of selling that daydream. Um, these images maybe aren't a place they had considered before, but it might be something that causes them to explore or just seek some more information. So here are some examples. So again, these examples I'm showing right now are those ESP posts that Passport Online creates for you. We'll talk about those a little bit more later. Um, you can see these are just beautiful images of beautiful destinations that would make somebody as they're scrolling through on their lunch break on their phone, this might make somebody stop and pause and look for a little bit more information. So just some examples. Again, we are just kind of evoking that daydream. So you should also, like I said a little bit before, um, post advice and tips to reestablish yourself as that brand expert. So here's some examples of those. So we post a travel tip Tuesday. These are just a little bit of information. Um, Here's another example of that. The tips can also be, um, this is just some kind of information about, you know, most cruise lines offer fantastic wedding packages. So it's just, again, reiterating that you are the expert. In this, you can also post um, news articles, any sort of relevant information, um, but just, yeah, advice. Another thing is, you know, ask questions and offer polls to learn about your community. Uh, we have a lot of would you rather questions or pick one. Um, in a page, you can also create a poll like where would, where, you know, between these four locations, which would you choose? All sorts of things like that. Ask questions. People, um, it's shown that people interact with posts where they ask a direct question like this um, and it gives them something to engage with. And then every time somebody comments on this, this post will show up in their friend list and on their news feed. So that just continues to grow your organic reach right there. Another example of that. There's another would you rather. And then here's just a post that ends in a question. Uh, where in the world do you wish you were relaxing right now? These can be very simple, but it just spurs engagement. Another thing you can do, sorry, another question. Um, another thing you can do is use videos, the live video tool on Facebook um, to tour ships, cities, or uh, give reviews. Um, Here's an example. So this is a live uh, tour shore excursion from our good friends at Premier Custom Travel. And he actually did a quick little snippet where he was doing a live video of his tour. And I actually did a screenshot of this page so you can just see all the different things that they share videos on. He's very good at being active on social media. So again, here's live from Cruise 360, um, a little bit of Alaska. He's on board of a it ships and does a little bit of tour in this one, same down here. So it can be anything like this. Um, and again, these will just show up in your customer's newsfeed and then they could look at it. So these are, again, kind of giving a, a review, um, which reinforces that you're the expert and it also maybe is showing them something cool that they haven't thought about, which helps reinforce that daydream state. And then finally, like I mentioned, um, use Facebook ads to market exciting travel offers. So what I showed you here is these are some kind of some posts that were created that are showing an ad. So this is an ad from Orlando. And so what you could do is you could actually, you know, you could either just let that be organic and live as it does right there. And this would get its own engagement. Or these would be great posts to kind of test out boosting or creating Facebook ads within those tools that exist in Facebook. So here's another example. Um, he has the World the Walt Disney World packages are on sale tomorrow. So using these to share ads as well. So Instagram. Instagram is considered a very important social network with many travel agents, um, as travel is something that is so easily visually represented, probably more so than anything else. With Instagram, you can create a sense of desire and really connect with followers emotionally. And again, this allows you to further create that daydream. So. Instagram is a photo sharing site. 80% of Instagram users follow at least one business account. 30% of users buy something they originally saw on Instagram. So means they were scrolling through and saw, you know, a trip, a product, something like that, and they saw it first on Instagram. And then in 2017, 48% of Instagram users reported finding a new travel destination on Instagram, which is a really interesting statistic. So People are going and they're searching hashtags 
and they're exploring and they're learning more, it becomes such a great tool to kind of learn and see. And uh, just by searching the hashtag for a location maybe you didn't know about before. And then another interesting statistic, over 120 million Instagram users visited a website after finding an Instagram profile. So this means they found the business account, they looked at it, they liked what they saw, and then they went back up and they clicked on the link to go visit that website. So that's great for lead generation as well. So what should you post on Instagram? Um, you want to post only high quality images that will captivate your followers. That's a trend in all of these, probably most important in Facebook and Instagram. Um, on Instagram, you want to extend your reach by leveraging trending hashtags. Um, you can use up to 30 relevant hashtags. Uh, they, they say that nine to 10 is optimal, but use the hashtags to make sure your post is searchable and visible to others using the same hashtag. So in case you're not familiar with how hashtags work, if you, oh, I have an example I'll show you. So I have hashtags as hashtag Belize, hashtag vacation, bucket list, travel. So if somebody clicked on this Belize post or hashtag, it would take them to a list of every post that had been hashtagged with Belize. Additionally, you can search that hashtag. So if somebody searched hashtag vacation within their Instagram app, it would bring you to every post that was flagged as vacation. So it's just more ways to explore and for people to find um, different accounts that they might not kind of organically interact with otherwise. But so here's an example, beautiful picture, short caption, and has a couple hashtags that go along with it. Another example here, beautiful image. And so these are actually ESP posts that I've taken a screenshot of and then shared to an Instagram account. You can see the hashtags here as well. And then same here, just beautiful picture. This would definitely catch someone's attention as they were scrolling through. So another thing you should do on um, Instagram is, you know, Facebook, I talked about kind of expressing your personality and bringing your team and things like that. You want to do the same thing on Instagram, but do it in a different way. Um, or one good idea is to share images of your staff's own travel. Um, this highlights the advisor's personal experience. And it also helps, again, to humanize your brand. So here's the picture from our Passport Online um, Instagram. This is a trip that I believe Cynthia went on. And then here's one from AIC Events. Uh, she went on a great excursion in South Africa and has tons of beautiful images. So this really just kind of reinforces her uh, personal um, experience and expertise on the topic. So uh, Twitter is up next, excuse me, Twitter is the best platform for up to the minute news and real time conversations. Twitter is one that we get a lot of questions on, people are a little bit less familiar. Um, Twitter, if you if you can master Twitter, it's a really awesome tool to use. It is a little bit trickier to kind of figure out the interaction and things like that. Um, it's not as, you know, user friendly perhaps, so some like a social, or sorry, like a Facebook or an Instagram, in my personal opinion. Um, but if you can build a Twitter following of travel-loving individuals, it can be a really great way to communicate. You can create a network of like-minded individuals where you can share information, articles, or deals you have to offer. So Twitter is a little bit more of um, you know, text and images, it's kind of the, the sweet spot. Um, Twitter is used by people looking for up-to-date information, like I said. And that's really because Twitter is a lightning speed social media channel that's for getting up to date, up to the second news, trend spotting, and providing or requesting customer service, all in 140 characters or less. It's a really great platform for promoting original content because likes and shares um, help propagate your post far beyond your existing network. Um, that's similar with Facebook as well. So what do you post on Twitter? Um, blog posts infographics, news articles to help kind of gain clout again as an expert and drive users to your website. Uh, here's an example of what that is. So this is just, you know, 20 reasons to drop everything and travel right now. They're using those hashtags again. Uh, Twitter is another social media platform that you do want to use hashtags in. And then it links to an article right there. And then here's another one, um, just some travel tips. So it's a short little piece of text. Um, 
hashtag and then a cool image that's going to make people stop and look. Um, it is important to note that when I mentioned earlier the 140 characters, Twitter does limit you to only 140 characters. So it's going to be kind of quick one-liner, maybe a link in an image, much shorter. Um, promotional offers, um, but it's really important to keep promotional offers or sales to less than 20%. That's the 20% rule, uh, kind of like the one in five of your tweets. Um, so that's because Twitter is more um, about conversations than outright selling. So here's some examples of what a promotional offer. Our partners, we love to cruise, built this one. Um, so here's a promotional offer. But like I said, so you would want to have um, about four like more information sharing posts before you did another promotional offer. And then in each post, you want to include about one to two hashtags. Um, you can see here, they did a good job of that. There was one hashtag, and then another right here, they had two hashtags. So where in Instagram, they say, basically use as many as you want, Twitter recommends you use about one to two. Okay, so LinkedIn. So we're gonna talk now, we're gonna show gears to LinkedIn and Pinterest. Um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, like I said, are the most popular and commonly used social media services, just for businesses in general, um, especially travel agencies. But we do get several questions about both LinkedIn and Pinterest, so I want to take a little bit of time to highlight those as well. Um, I kind of will actually ask you as well, if any of you really use these super successfully, um, either LinkedIn or Pinterest, in ways that I'm not sharing, I would love for you to share that with me. If you wouldn't mind either taking the time to email us or put it in the chat box even, um, this is something that we're always looking to get better at and to figure out how to support the travel agents as they are using this. If you have any cool ideas, we would love to hear them. Um, LinkedIn helps you create social connections and puts you in touch with people from the service and business industry. So LinkedIn is commonly used for business travelers. It allows you to become a thought leader in your industry. It allows you to network with people in many different industries. And it allows you to stay top of mind to a different type of audience. Um, you know, besides, the site is for professional working people, and working people have vacation days and take business trips. So if you think about it, it's not a bad place to post enticing images and content or offers that show how nice it is to go on a vacation. So what do you post on LinkedIn? Um, posting daily company updates is the most common and effective way to start a conversation, drive word of mouth, and directly engage with your target audience. You can share company news, uh, industry articles or thought leadership pieces. And then you can also ask followers to weigh in on topics. Um, posts will appear on your company page and in the news feed on the home page of each of your followers, similar to how it works on Facebook um, across the device and each of the platforms. So here's some examples of that. So this is just, you know, discover the world's top 10 most harmonious destinations. So this is an offer, or excuse me, not an offer, but just a really interesting piece of information as you kind of think about who's on LinkedIn uh, and maybe when people use LinkedIn, discovering the world's most peaceful destinations wouldn't be a bad way to spend five minutes of your work day kind of daydreaming a little bit there. And then did you know that every $1 spent on business travel creates $15 in profit and increased sales? This is another one. So these are just kind of think piece articles, some news or um, industry articles that allow a conversation to get rolling. So we're going to end with talking a little bit about Pinterest. Although uh, less popular as a social media channel, many social media marketers believe in having a very strong Pinterest. And Pinterest is another um, photo sharing platform. Um, a good thing to remember when using Pinterest is Pinterest is considered an aspiration planning site. So unlike Instagram, users aren't sharing pictures of their personal lives. They're bookmarking pictures that depict how they'd like their lives to be, whether that's how they want to dress, where they want to eat, or what they want to do when they travel. Um, but that's why Pinterest is a great part of social media marketing for travel agents. Uh, travel is one of the more popular categories on, on Pinterest. So Pinterest allows people to browse and learn. Pinterest allows you to create content that appeals to your clients. And then it allows you to group categories by topic or destination. So Pinterest is a little bit confusing um, as far as how to get into it. Not confusing, but I'm a little bit different. So 
as an agency, what you would want to do if you wanted to use Pinterest is you would basically create a board that was a series of pins. And these are pins that you found from all over the internet that sort of represent a um, specific topic. So I'm going to show you some examples of this. And then when a user came in and searched that topic, they would find your board. So again, this is just kind of a, a aspiration planning site is the best way to remember it. So what to post? Here's some of those board ideas I talked about. You could do foodie travel, honeymoon destinations, destination wedding, it could be Europe. Um, so basically, so this is an example of a travel agency pin or Pinterest board that I found. So this is one travel agency and they've created boards for each of these. So each of these are individual boards and it's a grouping of pins is what they call it on Pinterest. So a grouping of pins that represent everything in this board. So basically, Pinterest is just a way to categorize things that you found on the internet and kind of keep them together. So these can be just beautiful um, photo stories. These can be, you know, a packing list like this one right here, useful travel information. Here's a trip, uh, or sorry, a checklist for your trip, um, different food from exotic locations, whatever that might be. So when a customer clicks on one, so like I clicked on honeymoon, it would bring you to this. So you can see, this is just a collection of things that they have saved from all over the internet and kind of put in one location. So this isn't something that's going to directly sell travel, um, but it is going to help reinforce that idea of you being the expert and kind of help your customers do a little bit of daydreaming. So the hardest part of social media could be coming up with the content. Um, if you're still feeling a little bit overwhelmed or more overwhelmed now that I've shared all this information, I wanted to share just some really popular ideas. Um, use social media to stay on top of trends and vacation spots. Um, if you see that there's a lot of trends coming up in something um, or a specific location, share that. Tell people that. Um, share articles about that. Hold sweepstakes and run contests on your social media platforms. Crowdsource images and promote user-generated content. And that means asking your customers for images or when they send them in with their testimonials and reviews. Share those on your social media platform. Um, another thing you can do, oh, sorry, that's a repeat. Um, post about deals and promotions. Display photos of your clients' recent travel experiences. Share travel-related articles that would interest current and potential clients. And then use live video to live stream different locations that you might be at. Um, so like I said in the beginning, I'm going to take a couple minutes and talk about ESP. Um, so if you're still wondering how you'll come up with enough content to supply your social media pages, um, ESP would be a really great product for you. So what ESP is, is it's a social media posting tool developed exclusively for travel agents. And it's designed to take the guesswork out of social media for you. So it's an automatic, automated posting service that posts directly to your business Facebook page. We post fun travel-related content curated by our in-house social media experts. These posts are queued out to a dashboard for you to review. And we study all of our post data and create a schedule to ensure that the posts are delivered at the, per the perfect time every day. And then all posts are created with the purpose of driving traffic back to you. Every post will end in a call to action. So what do we post? Uh, photos, travel quotes, travel tips, trendy travel-related topics, engagement questions, supplier branding posts, and destination information. All of those examples we looked at in the beginning on Facebook and Instagram were ESP posts, but here are a couple more examples of those. So, you know, we have some caption this. This is a great one to run a contest with if you wanted to do something like that. You could use this and say, uh, winner of the caption contest receives an onboard credit or whatever you might be able to give away. These would just be attached to some destination information. So again, just beautiful images meant to kind of, you know, inspire that daydream. A couple more. And then a few more of those engagement questions. So these would come with a, you know, would you rather, I think this one is travel with your significant other or your friends, and then, in, you know, create some engagement with your customers. Another, this would be a would you rather that came with a series of questions, one for each, and ask your customers to pick. 
Um, there are prompts, so you know, something like this, tell your travel story with a very specific prompt for your customers to answer. And these are really great if you kind of got in and commented as well. People share really awesome stories with these. And then there's some, um, some trivia, so in which city is the world's largest Ferris wheel? Then later in the day, the answer would be reviewed or revealed. Um, I did want to kind of point out that ESP can be used across multiple platforms. So ESP in general is created to post directly to your business Facebook page. Um, so basically we would access your business Facebook page as a third party app and we would post on your behalf to that. With Twitter, um, Twitter allows you to permanently link your Facebook page in your Twitter account. So every post that went to your Facebook page would automatically end up on your Twitter account as well. And there's just a series of steps you can follow to do that, I believe. And that's actually something that's done through your Facebook account. Instagram, you do, you are allowed to share the post from ESP to your Instagram account. You do have to manually share those. And that's just because of the way um, Instagram kind of protects its content. So Instagram at this point does not let um, third party programs kind of post on your behalf. Um, sometimes if you, uh, I've heard stories of people using them and it actually ended up kind of shutting down their Instagram account. Um, there has been in the news recently um, some talk that Instagram is actually going to allow posting services to begin posting on your behalf. And that's something that we are keeping our eye on. And if that does become available, that would be something that we would hopefully be able to develop in the future. But you can use kind of scheduling tools like a Hootsuite or a Buffer or something like that, like you regularly would use for Instagram, or you can very simply, uh, like I did for those examples I showed, I just took a screenshot of the image off my Facebook page and just posted it directly to an Instagram page. It's very simple, just takes a couple minutes to do so. Uh, Pinterest, the same, you can manually share to Pinterest. And then LinkedIn also allows you to manually share. Um, so same as, that would be saving the image and then posting it there. Uh, but on your website, you can also add a widget that would display a feed of your Facebook page, so all of those posts would be visible there as well. Um, and we have had people get creative on how these kind of accounts link and share. So also, if you want to hear some ideas, we can show you some of that. And then ESP is available, like I said, for $20 per month, and you get three posts per day, seven days a week, and that's 365 days a year. So just that value alone, um, I don't believe you could possibly find a posting service that had that offered uh, that number of quality posts. Like I said, they're created by our in-house experts um, who are following the trends, and we get data to see what's working, and we adjust our plan on a monthly and weekly basis to make sure that your posts are getting the most engagement possible. Um, so that's twenty dollars per month. That link we talked about that's in the chat box would allow you to sign up for that right now. Um, and I did want to take a second to talk about our website program, which is Passport Online, or sorry, Next Site 2. Uh, we always get a little bit of questions about this. So we also offer a comprehensive website program that allows you to uh, straightforward search filters. We can add customer reviews, agent bios, and it does up-to-date inventory with clear pricing. And then most importantly, our sites allow you to kind of specialize and personalize them to really highlight you and your individual agency. Those are $55 per month with a $250 setup fee. Um, anyone who is attending this webinar and wanted to sign up for a website, we are actually taking $100 off the setup fee for the website. No, we didn't talk a lot about that today, but we'd be happy to answer any questions you had. So like I said, for the month of June, we will take $100 off the setup fee for that website. So reach out if you have any questions. And this is how you can reach us, um, ESP at PassportOnlineInc.com, or feel free to give us a call, and we'd be happy to answer any of your questions you might have. OK, are we ready for some Q&A? We are. Okay, Amanda, that was an amazing presentation. So much wonderful information. We do have Thank several you. questions, so uh, let's see um, how many of these we can get to. Uh, one of our agents says that uh, there are often uh, posts with hashtags on Facebook. Do those in 
interact with other platforms as well, or are those just staying on Facebook? Those would just stay on Facebook. So that gets a little bit confusing. Um, Facebook does allow you to use hashtags, and that's definitely, if that has worked for your business, then that is great. Um, hashtags are typically succeed best on Instagram and Twitter. Um, there's, if you share a post from Instagram to, to Facebook, it appears as if your hashtags are still there, but those don't always translate over. Same with like if you tag the person, um, but you can certainly use them um, on Facebook. But my recommendation would be to kind of stick to hashtags on Instagram and Twitter. Okay, great. Uh, one of our agents wants to know if uh, any analytics have been done uh, to uh, uh, see how many sales were uh, closed because of social media posts. So we um, we do get analytics on engagement. Um, as far as closed sales, we don't have actual analytics. We do have um, a lot of actual testimonials from agents who have had a lot of success in it, um, you know, in different, totally different um, conversations with each of them as well. Like somebody, you know, started using ESP and within like a week, they actually had a sale from a friend who was like, oh man, I forgot you did that. So it was just again, reinforcing that they were the expert. Another, it was they had just been talking about doing a, um, a you know, a cruise to somewhere. And then that agent happened to post something about that. Um, but as far as the actual conversions of posts, in general to like actual leads, it is a bit trickier to um, track. But we do have the analytics on engagement. Okay, well that's that's a good start, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we have a question about um, Facebook. If one has to have a personal account and a separate business account, as in the old days of Facebook, or uh, can you just have one of those now? So, you okay in order to have a business facebook account which i believe you used to be able to do just kind of standalone you have to now have a personal account so what happens is facebook treats your personal account as the administrative account for the business account so if you don't want to have um, a personal account because you just prefer not to be on facebook you can create kind of like a dummy account for your personal account and just have you know no personal information on it. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an active account, but you do need to have that personal account to begin a business account. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, for ESP, do agents get to choose which posts they want posted on their behalf? So we, we create all of the posts um, here, and so what we do is we queue them to a dashboard, and we queue them to the dashboard uh, twice a week, about three to four days in advance, and then you can go in and preview all of the posts ahead of time. Um, there isn't the option right now to pick and choose, but so you can go in and preview them, and if there's one that you don't want to post to your page, you can just simply block it, and it just won't display to the page. Okay, excellent. Um, can you go over what the cost of ESP is? Sure, so ESP is $20 per month and that is a month-to-month -month contract so you can start and stop at any time. Excellent, and uh, someone wants to know what does ESP stand for? <laughs> so ESP stands for, it's engaging social media posting. <laughs> Okay, that sounds good, ESP. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Very straightforward. For someone who deals mostly with um, luxury travel, and high-end travel, is there a way to utilize Facebook uh, to attract that kind of um, client rather than you know, tire kickers or people looking for less expensive vacations? Sure, so you can do all sorts of that. Um, that. So, I mean, our... I guess a couple things to that. So the ESP posts, like I mentioned, we do have some supplier posts from time to time. We recently just kind of did a campaign with Regent, which is a higher end um, uh, provider, um, had great responses there. So on our end of the content, we make sure to appeal to everybody. You can go in and again, 
take what might not be applicable for your agency. Um, there is a lot you can do within the Facebook kind of um, ad tools as far as targeting. So you can really get specific about who your target demographic is. Now you can't prevent just anybody from looking at your page, but as far as what you're sending out, you can really get specific about targeting um, all sorts of demographics, location, age, gender. Uh, there's a very large number of questions that they'll let you select through. Okay, excellent. Um, this uh, webinar has a lot of information. One of our agents wants to know if uh, if she joins Passport Online, is there further education available as far as uh, a social media program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, like I mentioned, um, we are pretty knowledgeable and like to talk about social media. So, if you were to join us, um, we'd be happy to kind of just where you are, you are now and kind of figure out what tools and steps you need to move forward with that um, Passport Online in general. We have our customer engagement team who is here to support you um, with you know, both social media and any other website programs you might have. And they are here Monday through Friday, and they are fantastic and love to help you learn. OK, that's excellent. Uh, if someone is interested in signing up for other services on Passport Online other than ESP, how can they sign up with you guys? Yeah, so this contact information here, um, either this email address or this phone number would be the best way to reach us. And then we would get you in touch with either myself or Cynthia, and we could discuss the different products that are available for you. Okay, and, and um, several people have asked where to find the link for ESP. If you look on the right-hand uh, side of your screen, there's a dashboard there, and at the bottom is a chat box where the uh, link is uh, is sitting, and uh, I've also sent several copies of the link to people in the in who have asked for it in the question area. And just Great. as a uh, a last um, comment, we have a comment from someone who says, "Excellent webinar, great content, very informative." So there you go, Amanda. You. you have many fans uh, for this wonderful webinar. Um, <laughs> Thank you, guys. If you have any other questions, if we didn't get to your question, or if you think of something after the webinar is over, Amanda has posted uh, a uh, email address and a phone number, and um, uh, they will be happy to answer your questions or point you in the right direction. Uh, I want to thank Passport Online, who was hosting this webinar, and in particular, our wonderful speaker, Amanda Cabaceres, Social Media, Business Development, and Marketing Coordinator for Passport Online. Amanda, as always, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We were excited to join you guys today. So thanks, everybody, for listening in. And I will add my thanks to the agents who are attending this webinar. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to be here, and I know you got a lot out of this. Um, so enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.